Hello and welcome to another video. This video is going to help you a lot in solving any question that looks like this where you have x approaching infinity or negative infinity and you have two terms that you need to add or subtract from each other. That requires a special um, strategy to solve and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Before I continue, I would like to advocate that you subscribe, especially if you've watched more than just this video on this channel. It's a great way to support this channel and to help me and to encourage me also. Okay, let's get into the video. Now, because you're approaching infinity, x is also approaching negative infinity rather, and this also, something is happening in the line of infinity. Now, because you can't subtract infinity because of this negative sign, or even add, you don't want to deal with adding or subtracting infinities or things approaching infinity. You want to ex express your, ex um, your term or your expression um, in terms of um, rational expressions, okay? You want to create fractions because with fractions, you can, um, you can know what's going to happen as x goes to infinity. But if you don't have fractions, it's a little bit difficult to decide what to do or what your output is going to be. So what do you do in this case? Always do this. You want to rationalize this expression. Now, when I say rationalize, it means you want to, you want to give yourself something that gives you a reasonable rational expression, that is fraction. So multiply this by its conjugate and also divide it by its conjugate so you don't change the value of what you have. So I'm going to do the work on this side and then we'll come back here and continue with the limit. But how can we change this expression to make it usable? So what we're going to say is that we're going to multiply x plus radical um, x squared plus 2x. We're going to multiply it by x. Instead of saying plus, now we just say minus. And that's the only difference, minus x squared plus 2x. We do the same thing here. We divide it by x minus radical x squared plus 2x. You see, with this now, we're going to have something that we can work with. So, the next thing is to multiply the top. Well, the denominator is going to look like this, just this. It's going to be x minus the square root of x squared plus 2x. And then the top is going to be the product of this and this. Let's multiply that out. I think it's going to be a long expression. Okay, well, this is going to be down here, but x times x is going to be 2x. x times minus x squared of x squared plus 2x. And this time is going to be plus x squared of x squared plus 2x. And then you multiply it like this, so you're going to do the whole time of this expression. So what I think is this time is going to be just minus x squared plus 2x. This time is going to be minus x squared plus 2x. So that's the, that's what we have. Now we just need to simplify what's on top, and we can see that this is the same as this, but just opposite sign, so they cancel out. And what we have left will be this expression, which is x squared. If we open this up, minus x squared minus 2x. And this is going to be x minus the square root of x squared plus 2x. Well, this is going to become, this takes this out again, this takes this out, and then we have negative 2x over what we had before, x minus the square root of x squared plus 2x. Now, I want you to see as a general thing that you will always have the opposite sign of this in the denominator, and that's all you're going to have. Unless the question is more complicated than this. But if it's in this form, you'll always have that in the denominator. Okay, now, what can we do? We need to take this now and write it back here because that's the limit we're about to take. Now, you see, we're not subtracting any two terms. We have a single term, a numerator, and the denominator. And that's easier to work with when you're dealing with infinity or negative infinity. Okay, so let's rewrite the question. So we have um, the limit as x goes to negative infinity of negative 2x over x minus radical x squared plus 2x. So with what you have here, what are you going to do? Remember, whenever you have a rational expression that um, contains a radical ex term, okay, or what you call radical term, and then it goes to infinity, what you want to do is divide both the top and the bottom by the term in the denominator that has the highest exponent of x. Well, based on what we see, this is the highest exponent, it's 1 because it's not x squared, because the square root of x squared will still be x to the first. So that's the highest term that you can deal with. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to divide both the top and the bottom by this term. Okay, so we're going to say divide by x, divide by x. Well, if you divide the top by x, you're going to end up with negative 2. If you divide the bottom by x, you're going to end up with 1 minus. If you divide this by x, that's going to be um, something you've seen in my other video. What do you do? How do you divide something under the square root sign by, by what does not have a square root sign? Well, remember that instead of you writing x, you could as well write the square root of x squared. Do you see that? Okay, so instead of writing this, so we're going to push in x squared here. 
But there's something special about taking the square root of x squared. If you watch my other video, let me explain this. Whenever you take the square root of x squared, your answer is the absolute value of x. Because it's possible that x is positive, and it's also positive, and also possible that x is negative. So you could have x, x times x gives you x squared, or negative x times negative x gives you x squared. So you still get x squared. Now when you take the square root, you have two options, okay? This means plus or minus x. Now which option will we take? Well, that's where this is important. It says x is approaching negative infinity, which means we are certain that x is negative. But it's so negative, it's approaching infinity. So the option you'll take in this case will be the negative option. Okay, so therefore, when, so you can see that actually the square root of x squared in this particular case is the negative of the square root of x squared that we normally would take. Because if you say, um, what are we doing? Well, this is the negative option because this is supposed to give you negative x. Okay, so you just put the negative sign here to show that you know you're gonna get a negative answer because x is approaching negative infinity. If this was x is approaching infinity, your option would be the positive option and you wouldn't have to put the negative sign here. So I'm going to rewrite this point. So what I'm gonna do here is instead of writing x squared plus two x and, and then dividing it by x squared based on that explanation, I'm gonna say it's negative, okay? It's gonna be negative, this is now gonna be x squared plus 2x divided by x squared divided by x squared. See, this is the part that you need to understand. So why did I put an x squared here? Remember I told you that x is the same thing as the square root of x squared, okay? But this x squared that is inside already, when you take the square root of it, it will be the negative option. So that's why we're gonna have this here. So at the end of the day, we have the limit as x goes to negative infinity. So this gives us the limit as x goes to negative infinity of, you have negative two on top, one here, minus, here you're gonna have minus again. You see that? So this is gonna be a plus, so I'm just gonna change this into a plus, okay? Plus, this is gonna be one, plus, uh, this is two over x. So now you can see that as x goes to negative infinity, well, this is a constant, this is a constant, this is a constant, but as this gets extremely large on the negative, this is going to become a zero. So what you have left will be this expression that says you have negative two over one plus the square root of one, which is negative two over one plus the square root of one is two. It gives you negative one. So the limit of this expression is negative one as x approaches negative infinity. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.